Thank you for staying with us on Consider This. Melissa and Sharat here with you tonight. We're speaking to Datuk Sri Shafi Afdal, Chief Minister of Sabah. Let's continue that conversation. Now, uh, Datuk Sri, if I understand correctly, Sabah has just convened uh, its 15th uh, State Legislative Assembly. Um, and I hope that was all done, uh, you know, observing the MCO, observing social distancing. I want to get your opinion, Datuk Sri, about uh, the decision at the federal level to have only one day of Parliament uh, sitting. Now, the Dewa Rakyat uh, Deputy Speaker had cited, you know, social distancing and uh, the MCO as rules for limiting the sitting to a single day. What did you uh, think about that decision? Well, uh, when we did that in Sabah, we had it three days, actually. You know, the first day was the opening done by the governor. Uh, though it's, uh, but it's not ceremonial as such. Just to fulfill what has been done traditionally by, by, by the state of Sabah. But normally we do have our proceeding, right, the whole day. From morning to late, uh, 10 o'clock in the evening, uh, practice that we have done. Be realizing that we are in a different environment, so we have to constrain ourselves having it two days, you know, but only daytime, you know, in the afternoon that we, we, we locked down that, uh, I think the last was 12, 30, one o'clock like that. So, but uh, we open up to ensure that people may have to perform what is embedded in the constitutions where they have to attend. You see, under the agenda, normally we said agenda, the state government said agenda, question and answer. I put up two bills there. One was the supply bill, and the other one was the uh, land, uh, of, of, uh, land bill, which I think uh, that is also quite important for us to ensure that we need to encourage our people to grow enough supply of food. We can't rely from import, export, import. Yeah. So Sabah had a two-day uh, legislative assembly sitting. Yes, is one day going to be enough for Dewan Rakyat to sit? Uh, because, you know, not too long ago, Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim pointed out that, in fact, it might not even be a full day. It might be less than a day. So is that going to be enough for Dewan Rakyat? Well, I think what we have done was we have 60 number of assemblymen. But at any one time, we subscribe to SOP under lockdown where I don't allow people to enter the Dewan at one time, 60 of them. We rotate them to ensure them they register themselves. Uh, that they have been there in attendance, that particular sessions of uh, said assembly. So about 48, 45, 47, at any one time. And I distanced them as well. The sitting arrangement was done properly and they use masks. Unless if they want to ask questions, they want to raise certain issues, then they have to open the mask so that we can hear them loudly. And that was how we done, how, what, that's how we did it, to ensure that even outside the day one, we provide all the facilities, you know, the, the uh, what do you call it, the thermal sensors, where you need to go through a tunnel there to check whether your temperature is right, and also we we place a doctors there to ensure that okay, this wife is alright. Otherwise, you won't have them to enter. So that's sort of the quite stringent, if I may say, uh, how we manage it. But it was okay. But you know, why why should we not allow those people to accept? No, a lot. So this is the platform for us. That's why I told him, I said, this is where a venue where people need to know where the money goes to, how we spend the money. For example, like, you know, what is the current status of uh, COVID now in Samba? What are the right prescriptions that you do? What are the steps that you need to take once we unlock this? So this is quite a valid, very important questions that not only the why we need to know, but the people at large. So I believe that this is one of the platform we should, we should provide, not to say a week like that, you know, but a day and a half like that, I don't think it's an ample enough for us to not only to know, you know, you're talking about 200 billion of money that we're going to spend. You know, people might raise a question, you know, the budget approved last year was 200 billion and this is another 200 billion. It's almost 500 billion, you know, a lot of money to be spent. But also the question is, that where the money? where's the money? You know? <laughs> Tazri, have you made your views known about the need for a federal government uh, or rather the federal parliament to sit for a longer period? Have you made these uh, views known to the prime minister? I did. I, I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't do that. I only only that, uh, you know, because I was quite bogged down with, the, you know, micromanaging the state of Sabah 
and organizing things, for example, like how best we can organize the said assembly at the same time. What is more important to me is that same yeah. You know, that was my consideration. I've yet to convey a message to them, uh, you know, uh, on how it should have been done. But of course, uh, it, it is a responsibility of the parliament because I'm quite sure I think the law minister normally is in charge uh, to run parliament, how the sessions is going to be held. But I think I'm quite sure what is important. This is the moment that, you know, we, we, we can't put our people, populations to be not in the know on what is happening. You know, a lot of questions they want to know and they want to ask. And this is the way and this is the platform. If we want to use it, we can use it and let the people know the step forward. Because otherwise, it is a one way kind of, uh, 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 for example, like if a uh, designation is being coming from Astro by the senior ministers almost every night, I've been listening, sometimes the same kind of content. I would love to ask questions where and how, you know, that, that is the thing that sometimes public do send me messages, you know, as it, uh, what, what is the next move? Why, you know, there's no supply, not enough supply of food, that sort of thing. Dr. Sri, I want to ask you about the uh, Prihatin package. Now, did the Prihatin package hit all the right marks when it comes to um, providing relief for Sabahans who have been affected by the MCO and affected by the pandemic? Uh, there was an announcement earlier made by the Prime Minister saying that 130 million to be given to states. So dividing, you divide it by 13 states, it's based about less than 10 million, or, uh, but we were given. So I, I must express this, thank you to, to the federal government for giving us about 10 million plus to help us to uh, sort of like, you know, finance some of what is required and uh, we keep this in. But of course, uh, how, how the amount of money has been disseminated no, I'm not in the know about that because it is done by the federal, federal authority. For example, like the food items, you know, that they have already handed over to to, to the people at large on the ground there. Even uh, I believe that they are using uh, data, data coming from LHDN, ECASI, which is directly, they, you know, channel into the account of each individual. That also, I don't know how many numbers I've received. Uh, that sort of questions that people need to know, you know. And uh, we are not in positions to know all those things what have been done by the federal government in, for example, like in Sabah. But of course, the other, I must express my gratitude to all the frontliners, which is under the federal government, for example, like the police, uh, Ministry of Health, and uh, APM. That was uh, when I decided to give one million each to all the frontliners. You know, I give to Ministry of uh, the, the Police. It, that comes from the state government's funding and uh, to ensure that they must be protected, they have ample supply of food. I don't want them to be on the ground every now and then, 24 hours by ship, and uh, they don't have enough supply of food while they, uh, you know, they do, do, do their duties and responsibility. Uh, Dr. Sri, uh, one of the questions that surrounds the second tranche of the Prihatin package is its focus on SMEs. And I understand that Sabah has a lot of micro SMEs. Now, was that uh, you know, in terms of the design of the Prihatan package, was that taken into account? Do you think there could be more that could be done for the specific needs of the Sabah economy? That is why I think I have already highlighted it is important for us to work closely G to G, in spite of a different political ideology of belief. But what is important, we have to ensure that the country is moving forward on the right directions. But so far, uh, I have not been informed as how that sort of money will be disseminated through which particular bank, who is going to be uh, the recipient. Uh, but on our part, I have already alienated some amount of money, small amount, about to the magnitude of 90 million ringgit there, giving, helping the young entrepreneur as well as the SME. And uh, I dedicated in my announcement of the day is about, the range is about 2 to 3 percent interest that they need to pay, but well, it's very competitive compared to many other uh, facilities that is provided to the business entrepreneur. All right, more with Dato Sri Shafi Afdal in just a couple of minutes. Stay tuned to consider this.